a lot of people have told me that they thought he got exposed in the Kill Brook fight. Um, do you agree? And what did you see in that performance that he had, which a lot of people weren't too impressed I don't with? think, I don't just think it was the Kell Brook fight. I mean, yeah, Kell did a lot of things. He was able to hit him and show us a lot of things that, you know, he does wrong. Uh, but in saying that, I've studied Gennady for some years now, about two, two and a half years, because anytime you have a guy, you're in the same weight class, you know, they're on your radar, you start to, you know, you start to study them. So I've seen a habit of certain different flaws uh, that we're going to work on. And I think the key to this fight is just making sure that I'm the best me and use my best attributes and minimize his. How long has this fight been on your mind? And did you already know the showdown was coming and it was nearing? Um, I mean, I think it's been the last year, especially after the Peter Quillen fight that I had. I definitely knew that it was going to be looming soon. I didn't know how long it would take. Uh, we tried to get a fight with uh, BJ Saunders. He wasn't having it. He's not trying to fight anybody. No, he's, yeah, he definitely wasn't with it. Uh, so we had to move on, and that's when we had the second Sergio Mora fight. But we just wanted to step up each and every time, you know. But I'm happy that the fact that we still didn't even get this fight, we're still able to get this massive fight because it is a really big fight, and it's the best fight that could be made at middleweight. Instead of looking at his performances to kind of disclose your strategy of how you're going to approach the fight, what do you feel like was Golovkin's best performance? You appear to be a student of the game, so which do you think was his best performance instead and, of his worst? And, and don't get me wrong, I like watching Gennady. I, I'm a fan of the sport of boxing, so I like to watch people, and I like to see knockouts, and I like to see skills, and you know, I'm just a fan of that. I, I don't just watch guys outside of my weight. I watch guys in my division as well. Uh, I don't know which was his best performance, um, but he has some really good performances out there. I mean, he's a devastating puncher, and, you know, who doesn't not, who doesn't like knockouts at the end of the game, so. Uh, but like I just said before, you know, I tune all of that stuff out, and I know what I bring to the table, and I just have to focus and, you know, do what I have to do in that square ring. What are your thoughts on uh, Triple G actually being very complimentary about you? He says that you're probably more likely his best opponent to date, and he's just so complimentary of you. It's just respect. I think uh, he's a very respectful guy. There's nothing bad to say about him as a man. Um, and the fact that he shows that respect as far as giving me the credit just due, which the public really isn't, uh, I think it speaks volumes. Uh, but, you know, I don't really let that phase me in a sense because he still have a job to do and I still have a job to do. And that's to physically, mentally get prepared for, uh, get prepared for March 18th. Daniel, how do you visualize this fight now from uh, me having my hand raised, uh, however that comes, you never know, this is a sport of boxing, anything can happen, but I do see myself being victorious. Uh, we don't know. We, we have no idea how his chin can really hold up to a really true middleweight power puncher. Uh, only time will tell. Uh, anything can happen in, in sport of boxing. Are there still questions on him? That is he like legit? Do you think you're going to answer those questions, or do you think people, some people, still aren't sold on him completely? Um, Would you be the guy that kind of gives him that validation or not? Um, I think a lot of questions will be answered. Uh, as far as myself as well, and mm -hmm. Triple G inside that fight. That's why this is such a big fight, because there's a lot of questions still to be answered about myself and Triple G. Uh, you know, his level of opposition people can criticize. Me coming back from cancer, I haven't fought the, the best tough opponents, mm -hmm. so I could be criticized. And I think this will put it into everything, and this will really dictate who is the true middleweight uh, in the division. Can you touch on Billy Joe Saunders really working with him? Why he was so unwilling to Why he was so unwilling to fight you or you to fight I have no idea. Um, I'm gonna go. When we first was in negotiations, uh, or what I thought were negotiations, uh, you know, I allowed my team to do their job and. From what I heard, the response from the other side wasn't really as good, and the probability of the fight happening wasn't good either. Uh, so we just kind of moved on. It did take a while because we really thought it was going to happen, especially after he beat Andy Lee. We were in prep to fight him, and we were ready, but for some reason it just didn't happen. So I don't know if it was the, maybe I wasn't the biggest fight out there, or maybe he was looking for bigger fights, or maybe easier. I, I, I can't really speak on behalf of what he was thinking or what his team was thinking, but at the end of the day, it didn't happen, so what happened to Do you think it's uh, hurting the sport? 
Yeah, I think he's hurting himself, it, it, and it's hurting the sport as well. But I just think that you know, in today's day, you know, a lot of people they want to get compensated too, but they want to fight lesser opponents. They don't want to fight the best, you know. And I think that's why I'm being respected so much because. The fact that I couldn't get that fight, I stepped up to the biggest fight that there was. And uh, I am getting compensated very fairly, but in still saying that, you know, I understand these guys, but it's still, it's, it's, it's hurting the sport. Yeah. Danny, your thoughts, you know, as soon as uh, Triple G gets an opponent, everybody tries to find whatever they can find to like, downgrade that opponent and everything. You know? So, you know where this is going. Everybody's going to bring up the Kirok fight. So what is different from the Danny Jacobs that fought Kirok to now? Okay, so how old are you now, if you don't mind me asking? 30, 33. 33. Uh, when you were 23, were you the same person? No, I was not. Have you matured since? Yes. Mentally, physically, and everything across the border. Yes. My point exactly. Fighters, they evolve. Fighters get better. Fighters' mental strength gets better. They physical. They, they can train. And like I've said, I've been a student of the game for the last two years that I've been outside of the sport of boxing. And ever since my loss, I have knocked out every <laughs> opponent I have stepped in the ring with. So if that don't speak volumes, I don't know what will. But I'm definitely not the same fighter that I was when I was like a 22, 23 year old kid. I'll be 30 February 3rd, so. You know, you'll see a much different, and I'm in my prime now. I have that man strength now, and you know, most importantly, I don't fear any man, you know?